Hi, Larissa. Uh, we're going to take a look at your first two uh, experiments that you have posted. So we will screen share here and get uh, started. All right. Now, um, so let's find your emphasis project. There it is. All right, so the first thing that I um, that I do with these is just kind of go over um, your uh, your posting in terms of whether you were able to follow the parameters, follow the, the structure and the, the instructions of the, the project. Um, these things are very simple, usually laid out um, for you, sometimes very highly structured step by step, like this emphasis. Sometimes they're much more loosely outlined where um, it's uh, well, a single principle you're exploring, but you have the freedom to move around and do all kinds of other things. Um, this one was very specific. You're starting out from a distance and then cutting that in half, cutting it in half, cutting it in half. So that was the structure by which you're working. And so I'm looking at that as evidence of what you're um, of what you're doing. So it looks like you started out here. You've got hmm, not quite as close, right? Um, or, or maybe you are. I mean, the reason I have you guys cutting in twice as close is that we want that distance to be obvious. Um, the half a distance closer should be enough to make it clear that you are no longer at the previous distance, nor are you at the distance you're about to be next. So that cutting it in half is enough that creates this variation of, of points of view. Um, so it, it looks like we're a little bit um, here and there in terms of distances. Now, this might be an illusion um, because you might have been at a distance, but then we're aiming at something that was still far farther away. And then at the next distance, you're aiming something that was really close. That's a little bit tricky. So um, here we're just sort of looking at um, uh, the basic structure, though. So environment, um, portrait of a structure, line, shape. Why am I having you guys do these specific ones, right? Um, line, shape, light, shadow, texture. As I see it, you forgot color. Um, so here we have particular um, uh, elements of, uh, uh, of area. Um, I think you forgot color. I think that color was in there. Um, anyway. Um, these elements do a lot more than just tell me about uh, or, or challenge you with a particular theme. What they do is they tell me a little bit about where the whole class is on these basic principles. You know, the principle of line, um, the principle of, of shape, uh, the use of things like texture. These are things that um, the, the group itself, the whole class, um, is on one level or another uh, understands it. And some students will understand it uh, to a greater degree, principle-wise. They have more experience with uh, these kinds of ideas and arranging things, and others may not. This actually first project um, gets you involved with dealing with those things, but also allows me to see where the entire class is generally on their understanding and the use of these principles. So I, it helps me to, to also look at the uh, look at them. <clears throat> so looking at these uh, these images, you've chosen a day, time of day where the lighting uh, is quite soft. Um, it, it, when I say soft, it means it's, it's sort of filtered. You can see that there are no discernible shadows, even though there are shadows. Uh, and this is because the overall sky, the color cast of the sky is being diffused by, um, by shadows, or uh, I'm sorry, by clouds. And so there's no direct light hitting anything at all, which can be wonderful for doing um, studies of color and studies of texture. Not so great for things like line, um, and that kind of stuff. Um, excellent uh, uh, subject building. This is a kind of a cool building. I, I know it. Um, it's just down the, the, the street from where I live. 
Um, you've got some really good opportunities here. There are a few things that I would um, suggest composition wise that, that we could clean up. Um, things like these areas here uh, on the composition that are not really needed. They're not participating in the rest of the composition. If they were not there, if you were to uh, have moved the camera over just a little bit and cut the, the composition here, allowing for more information over here a little bit. What that would do is it would kind of close off that composition a little bit, allowing it to be more about all of the information there. This creates a lot of contrast in the photograph because this is a point of highest contrast in your image. We've got this brightness, but it's not as bright as over here. He's also got this darkness, which is almost the darkest point in your photograph next to this, which is the point of highest contrast. I don't think you probably intended for us to be looking here. Right. Um, and so that's what happens when when that when that when that goes on. So um, that's like one, uh, you know, a, a something that we that we see about compositional strategy. The same thing is kind of happening here. Your cameras having actually a, a hard time deciding what the. Uh, what the, the exposure is supposed to be here. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, because you've got very bright light here and you've got a very dark light here. Um, this is hard to control, um, especially if you're not using manual control on your camera. I don't know what camera controls that you are familiar with, um, but manual control using all of the settings yourself, uh, you'd be able to to, to control something like this a little bit better and wouldn't have this sort of weird haze going on. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge. But again, it's the same issue that I, that I had mentioned in the other image where you have a point of high contrast here that's not quite working for you. And you really want us to, to focus here, I'm guessing. Um, this is what you're emphasizing and what you're showing us. So uh, I think it would have been better if we had moved over onto this side as well. So what you're actually trying to demonstrate to us here is what you're seeing. Um, it's not about the building, really. It's more about how you see things. And um, that's what this project is, is generally about. Um, when someone asks you, what do you see? You want to really show them what you see, because that is what is going to distinguish your work from everything else that anybody else makes. So when somebody says, show me your point of view, um, you want to be able to do that um, very well. No one else is going to be the uh, the expert on your work um, more so than you. You have to be the authority. So that's that's a, an important part of uh, exploring emphasis. Let's move over to your balance because um, this oftentimes starts to address some of those things that uh, I brought up in, in terms of your composition um, on the on the first one. Here, your lighting. Um, uh, it becomes much stronger here. You're, you're farther back away from things, which seems to be a little bit more comfortable for you. Um, your, are your compositions in the previous uh, emphasis where you were farther away, you seem to be more comfortable there. You seem to not quite know what to do with that middle ground uh, there where you were sort of a little bit closer to the object, but not totally close up. When you were farther away making photographs of the, the building, I'm, I'm racking my brain trying to remember the, the Rosemont, I think is what that was called. Um, when you were farther away from that building, it seemed like you were more comfortable composing. Here, you're choosing all these distances. Um, and so uh, you seem to be much more at ease making compositions with things that are at this distance. Rule of thirds is a structure that we use. Um, it's something that you can in, in sort of uh, plug in to a lot of different uh, uh, spaces. You're using it um, very well here on the, the vertical, on the vertical line of the uh, of, of the train here. Um, the horizontal right here is a little centrally located to be technically qualified. This is much better um, right here. It, it looks a little bit like you're using a filter here um, where you've got this sort of strange shadow going on. Um, it looks like you may have done a setting maybe inadvertently or accidentally or something like that on this. Maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> it just looks a little bit strange. It looks like a... Um, uh, a miniature filter has been accidentally set on your camera here um, that makes the image look a little bit <clears throat> a little bit like a, a miniature set. It looks cool. Um, I just wanted to bring that up that that might have um, have have occurred. 
here you got this backlit image. Um, this is a, this is a tough one to try to expose properly. Again, with um, manual control of your camera, you'd be able to do this a little bit better. You're almost there. Um, you got some pretty good detail going on right here. You lose it right into here. This is a tough one. Um, <clears throat> various times of day, exploring that kind of thing. The subtlety of making an image like this. Um, requires some experience um, to be able to, to do this. This is a this is a challenging photograph to try to achieve. It will be beautiful when you are able to pull out the rest of the detail there and still have that nice color to the sky. Um, rule of thirds wise, you're you're hitting it pretty well. Your horizon still is a little centrally located. This tends to be where you know where it's it's difficult. You get one of the vertical, or or some students get the horizontal and they don't quite get the verticals. Um, we just want to know that you know what it is. Um, now, none of this means that I would change how the photographs look. Um, you, you've made some very successful and beautiful photographs here. Um, this is really cool. You've got this beautiful sky up here and this dark sort of texture going on down here. This image in and of itself, I think, would be improved if we had the rule of thirds incorporated as far as the horizon a little bit more. Um, you almost have it here, uh, a little bit farther down, and you would have had it, uh, the sky. I would have actually gone, because your emphasis is more on this, had a little bit more information down below. If what was down below here was distracting, uh, moving it down a little bit lower and giving the sky the upper hand would have been the way to go as well. That is if we are trying to follow the rule of thirds. Here, uh, these two images are almost identical as far as the positioning, uh, or as far as the, the image. Uh, in a series, when you're showing someone a series of, of images as, you know, here's, here's my work, here's a series of images, you're gonna wanna avoid a repetition like that, um, especially if you're gonna put it side by side. Um, uh, avoid that, um, because you're always gonna then compare which one is the, one, the real one that you meant us to, to look at. So uh, try to avoid that in the future. Uh, this is a good solution. Uh, this is where we're getting to a little bit more uh, balance in terms of the weight. Uh, still centrally uh, positioned hor uh, horizon line. We either want to have it up or down if we're following the rule of thirds. I, I qualify that if we're following the rule of thirds and we're supposed to be in this experiment. Um, this one's getting a little bit better still. And we're getting closer. It, I know it's tough. Um, it, it is a difficult thing sometimes to be looking at all of this, all these things uh, all at the same time. Excellent quality of light on this series, though. Uh, I would congratulate you on, on that part of it. Excellent use of the entire picture plane, using every inch of the composition very, very well. You're letting objects run off the compositional page. Um, uh, off of the scene, you're allowing stuff to uh, to, uh, uh, to sort of happen. You're letting continuous happen. So you got the, the train, you're letting the shadow kind of continue that line and it kind of create a shape like this. This is all beautiful, beautiful stuff for us. This one got a little bit dark in the same way that I was uh, uh, mentioning before. It's a very difficult one to, uh, to pull off. This one's a little bit more of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a portrait study there toward the, toward the end. Graphic designer would really like this one because they, it's a, a, an opportunity to lay in text and stuff like that. The rule of thirds does do that for us. Um, it, it is something that when, um, when you're using it or working with a designer on like a, a, a book layout or some other kind of print publication or a web, web layout, um, they're going to want you to use certain things like that because it will help um, them with their design um, parameters, especially if you're consulting with the designer prior to um, making the images. If you know that they're using a certain structural um, uh, strategy in their compositions. It may not be the rule of thirds. It may be something else that they're using. Then you can fold that into your compositions so that they don't have to mess with your photographs. They don't have to try to recompose them or crop them or anything like that. Uh, they'll thank you for it because they can just drag and drop your images in. And you'll be grateful because you're not having your images um, sort of corrupted by um, by re being recropped or reshaped or anything like that. So I've seen a lot of really good stuff here. Um, uh, just uh, 
you know, take some of the points that I'm making as observational. None of it is criticism. It's all about trying to help you to move forward with your, uh, with your photography. Um, all of it is meant to improve upon um, the work that is already looking um, very good. Here's the thing. You can make some amazing, wonderful photographs, which you have made some amazing, wonderful photographs here. The things that I'm pointing out where they need some improvement, um, those are usually uh, where I'm seeing in terms of the parameters, what we're looking for you to explore um, could be clarified even more and more. Um, and this is really about the translation between the creative and the professional and helping you understand that there is this sort of area between where you want to, to explore the creative uh, sort of component uh, of a project, but at the same time be able to sort of work within the framework uh, of, a, of a professional sort of um, a project. So um, look forward to the uh, seeing more of your photography and more of your images in class. All right. Bye-bye now.